again, my name is Jessica Sibley. I am the extension agent in Wayne County. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you today about the general aspects of raising backyard flocks. So one of the first things that we need to look at um, whenever we want to raise chickens is you want to be able to contact your local city hall or county board of supervisors to check on zoning or ordinance restrictions um, for your area. A lot of times the county ordinance or zoning restrictions are gonna be more towards the commercial poultry versus the backyard poultry. Um, but I know like Bay St. Louis, I pulled up um, their code of ordinance and their states that no person sh shall raise or have or keep any foul animals um, livestock, reptiles, accepting dogs, cats, birds, and other household pets within the city limits of 300 feet of another residence. Um, so that's where we come in. We want to inform our neighbors of our plans to raise chickens. Um, especially if we're going to be in close proximity to them, um, because it wouldn't take much noise, dust, feathers, flies or even the odor because I know some of y'all y'all know what the odor is um to be a little unneighborly so in order to prevent this let's go ahead and inform our neighbors that you know we're looking at getting um backyard birds so whenever we decide that we're going to get our birds we need to ask the question what type of birds are we looking to raise are you looking more for egg production birds or what we call dual purpose birds, which is gonna be meat and egg. Um, all my presentations, just a little side note, um, where it has the extension choosing the right breed for your backyard flock, that is actually a hyperlink. Um, I have these set up to where in the PDF format that I'm gonna email to Dr. Christian, um, you can actually, you will have all the web links to the different publications that I reference to. So um, you, whenever you get a copy of this, whenever he gets it up on Google Drive, you'll actually be able to look at the different publications that I pulled information from, okay? Um, so let's look at our egg production birds. Um, so egg production birds, um, such as your Leggerns, your uh, Menorcas, your Andalusians, your Anacondas, um, Sicilian buttercups and your Catalinas are just some of the breeds that are available. Um, the single comb white leggard is an egg laying machine. They have high egg production, good quality eggs, large size white eggs, um, with only consuming a small amount of feed. But the, the one thing with leggards is, is they're not considered a meat production bird. So they're more on the lightweight um, at maturity if you're looking for more of a meat production bird. So when we look at our dual purpose birds, these are going to be our medium weight, um, such as our Plymouth Rocks, our New Hampshire, Orbington, Rhode Islands, Wyandots, or Dominickers. Um, these are breeds that are going to work well for not only providing meat, but also eggs. Um, one thing to keep in mind though, with dual purpose birds, um, they lay fewer eggs than say your leggerns would, um, but they are large enough to provide more meat than what your leggerns would. So once we decide whether we're gonna do egg production or we're gonna do meat production, we need to know how we're gonna get our birds. So we have different options. Um, we have our chicken hobbyist, um, or, or of course, you can always do mail order. So just a side note, um, a lot of times we recommend to purchase birds that are from what we call an MPIP, which is a National Poultry Improvement Program. This is just a certification that individuals or hatcheries have um, that can acquire through the Animal Board of Health to ensure that the birds that you are purchasing are healthy, prevents the spread of any diseases in your area to other flocks. So when we look at purchasing our birds, especially from a hobbyist, it's usually a mixture of males and females, especially if they're chicks. Um, 
of course, there's only two methods in uh, sexing chicks or biddies, um, which is your vent sex, vent sexing and your feather sexing. So your vent section, uh, I'm getting tongue tied over here. Vent sexing uh, involves holding the chick upside down. Um, expelling fecal, fecal material and then um, looking at the actual parts of the animal to see whether it's male or female. Um, the feather sexing is only possible on some breeds, not all of them. So most of your hobbyists will have birds um, in lots of male or female and that's usually after they've matured. So when they're younger, it's usually gonna be a mixture. As they get older, then they can separate them from female to male. Um, so whenever we look at our hobbyists, of course you can get them from farmer's markets. Uh, individuals, I know I have one producer here in my county that is looking at getting MPIP certified. Um, she's got Easter Eggers, Anacondas, um, Orpingtons, Silkies, all kinds. Um, tractor supply. I know a lot of folks get their birds from tractor supply. Whenever you go up in there to get your dog food or um, your cow feed or whatever else you go up in there for, you know, you see the little birds and the little ducks up in the little um, troughs. And yes, they're cute. They're very cute when they're little and then they get bigger. And we have to keep that in mind sometimes. Um, the other way that you can get birds is by mail order. Um, and this is something that we do, especially with our youth. Um, we have a project called the um, Poultry Chain Project, and that's actually a picture of two of my kids that I've gotten their birds this year. Um, so we want to take note, especially when we do our mail order, that you can get a mixture of males and females, or you can get all males, which um, a lot of websites call them cockerels or you can get all females, which are gonna be considered pullets. Um, some of those mail order system, systems, I know Murray McMurray, uh, if you buy a certain amount of biddies, then they will throw in a special breed. Um, one of my kids one year had legrins and they ended up getting above coaching, uh, above coaching also. Um, Another thing is, is you need to determine if you want chicks or juvenile birds. Um, do you want to have them in a brooder box? Do you want them to where they're already big enough to where they can fit for themselves? Um, that's something else that you need to keep in mind also. Okay, I'm, don't touch the mouse. All right, so once we decide how we're gonna get our birds, then we need to look at housing types. So we have our brooder boxes, which is designed to raise our chicks if we decide to do chicks. We have our hen house, which can have um, a run, whether it's um, with or without one. And these are for our older birds, mainly our, our female birds that are laying. Um, we also have chicken tractors, which is a bottomless movable pen with housing. Um, and then we have our chicken coops. So at this point, we need to ask the question, do you want portable housing suitable for pasture raised poultry or fixed housing? Will the structure you have in mind be, be for convenience, ease of gathering eggs, cleaning and disinfecting? Um, we leave enough room for any kind of expansion um, a good rule of thumb is to provide, you know, three to three and a half square feet of floor um, per bird, especially in um, egg production. So keep in mind that the housing should be clean. We want it to be dry, dry-free, well-drained area, comfortable year-round. Um, with larger areas, you'll have less odors, less flies, less issues with disease. Um, and you can use pressure treated lumber um, for wood in contact with the ground. And it's also suggested um, to have the front of the house, the windows and the outside rung to um, face the south. So we wanna select a housing that not only will protect our flock um, 
from the weather, but also from other predators. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit too. So let's look at our brooder boxes. So the brooder period is from the day the chicks hatch until they're about eight to 10 weeks old. There are many types of um, brooding boxes, all can be made differently. Um, I've showed you a couple examples here. Um, this might be, you know, out of a shed or a building or um, you can build it out outside. Um, as long as they have a warm, dry, clean place to live, um, we want to make sure that we keep the, the floor dry. We want to use pine wood shavings, um, which makes a really good floor litter. You should start um, about four to six inches of, of dry litter on the floor. Um, me personally, I like the box that the tray actually comes out of. To me, it's easier to clean. Um, we want to make sure that our animals have plenty of clean water, that they have fresh air, but no drafts. Um, the chicken, the, the brooder box should always um, have the opportunity to get some type of airflow. Um, so with our brooder box, we, we want to make sure that we have our chicks there from the day that they're born or the day that we get them up until they're eight to 10 weeks old. So then we move on to our hen house. Um, there's different types of hen houses um, and there's some with a run and some that do not have a run. Um, and the run is basically the area for the birds to go out and walk around, um, kind of strut, uh, get their little exercise, you know, pick the ground if you have it in a grassy area. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So the bottom photo is actually one that has a run with it. When designing your hen house, we want to keep in mind that you'll need at least um, three inches of deep, clean, mold-free, dry, absorbent litter, but nothing that's really dusty. So um, like the pine wood shavings that we had talked about would be a good option. Um, the we, we try to stay away from hardwood shavings because they're not recommended because they do grow mold. Um, cedar shavings can tend to mat um, and, they, and they can enhance some odors. Um, so we try to stay towards the, the pine shavings, rice hulls, chop straw, shredded newspaper. Um, one of the things that you can do is make sure that you stir the litter to keep it from packing, um, repl replacing your wet litter with dry material to reduce odors um, and caking, um, making sure that you're, that you're moving your, your waterers um, regularly to prevent wet areas. This, with the hen house, one of the things I wanna point out to you is these are basically made to make it easier for the producer in order to collect eggs. Um, you know, for those that want to go into egg production. So let's look at our chicken tractors. Our chicken tractors are a bottomless portable shelter pen that can be moved around the property. Um, of course, there's various designs, um, and these are really popular against, uh, uh, really popular among uh, sustainable production enthusiasts. Um, of course, they're easy to relocate. Um, they are a source of fertilizer. Um, they do offer insect control. They are semi-labor intensive, especially if you have a big one like the one on the left. Um, it's, it's probably gonna take more than one person to move that one, I would suggest. Um, the only other thing is, is if, if you leave it in the, the same spot for too long, the ground will become barren. Um, the grass will actually die out after a short period of time. Um, so that's something else to keep in mind. So our chicken coops. Some chicken coops can be elaborate and some can be simplistic. As long as they are functional for you and your flock is the only thing that matters. Um, of course, you can build them to your specifications. Um, 
whether you have a dog pen that you're not using and you want to put birds up in it, it you can make it work. Um, we also offer some plans on our website and the link is actually there. Um, and I have some other links actually in the notes section um, that you'll be able to look at other plans also. So whenever we're selecting our housing, um, we want something that will protect our flock from not only from the weather, but also predators. So our dogs, foxes, coyotes, raccoon, and possums. Um, we want to keep our birds totally confined with fencing, um, covered runs, if best, um, especially for, for predator protection. Um, with outside runs, we want to bury the, we suggest to bury the wire along the, the line border at least um, 12 inches deep and tow the fence outward about six inches. Um, of course, this will keep predators from digging under. We want to, uh, if available, provide a cover top to prevent hawks and owls from gaining access. Um, you can even take um, baler twine and run it zigzagging across the top of, of the run to detour um, our, our flying predators. So when we look at our housing, we have already mentioned once before that we want to make sure that we have adequate space. So we want to have three to three and a half square feet per bird, especially in egg production. Um, we want to make sure that we have perch spaces, um, six to 10 inches per bird, um, and, and nesting areas, especially for those that we want them to lay. Um, we want to have one nesting area for every four to five females. So then we look at our lighting. So laying hens require adequate light year round to continue laying. Um, hens will molt or quit laying eggs when the decreased hours of light. So whenever we go from short, from longer days to shorter days, um, one of the things that we recommend is um, putting a 15 to 25 watt light bulb um, in the pen. Usually it covers around a 40 to 50 square feet um, area so depending on how big your area is you may have to do more than one um so light intensity affects um not only egg production but um the cannibalism aggression uh feed and water intake uh reproductive and egg production cycles So we need at least a maximal production with 16 hours of light for our laying hens. Um, and birds will usually lay um, an egg about every 24 hour, 25 hours. Um, so light is an important factor, especially not only for egg production, but for feed and water intake also. So when we're selecting our houses or selecting plans, we want to look at ventilation or air movement without a draft is, is very critical. Um, warm air rises and cold air falls. So we must have circulation and air exchange to prevent um, temperature stratification, um, air from being stale. We, we want to make sure that with warm air, we know that it holds moisture a lot more than cold air. And as of right now, I'm sure we can feel that whenever we walk outside because the humidity is so high. So for every 20 degrees that we increase in our air temperature, it's holding water capacity doubles. So this is crucial for ventilation management. So ventilation, um, you really need it in the summer and it's different than in the winter. So we want to make sure that whenever we're selecting our house, sorry, whenever we're selecting our housing, um, that we want to make sure that our windows are on the south side of the house. This ensures light and warmth during the winter 
Um, we want to make sure that we slant our window seals um, because we don't want our birds to be using our window seals as uh, perches or roosts. Um, we want to place vents on the south or east side if possible. Uh, chickens cannot sweat. So after their body reaches a certain temperature, they'll actually start panting. Um, so we want to ensure proper ventilation in the summer months. Dampness and ammonia um, indicate a lack of ventilation. So if we start smelling that, then we may want to make some adjustments, uh, especially to the housing to get some insulation or to get some ventilation in there. Um, you can insulate the roof and walls. Um, which reduces summer heat gain and it reduces moisture accumulation. So we want to keep a constant clean and fresh water supply available. Water intake varies greatly with the weather conditions. Um, if using a, a, a five gallon bucket, uh, white buckets, keep the water cool, then, then colored buckets. Um, some individuals take five gallon buckets and hang them up and run a tube down from it. And you know, that's fine. There's different ways that you can um, do your water systems. Uh, drinkers or water systems should be clean every day with diluted chlorine bleach. Um, you can also add a low level of chlorine bleach to clean drinking water to inhibit bacterial growth. Usually it's around one to two tablespoons of bleach for every 20 gallons of water. Drinker placement is something that is um, crucial also. So we want to make sure that we have plenty of, of waterers, not only in the pen, but we, we also want to make sure that we have them, um, especially those that um, the waterers that you hang, that we want to make sure that the bottom of the drinker is at the back of the shortest bird height. Um, I know some of us probably have a variety of birds and some of them are larger than others. So we want to make sure that the water the drinker is actually to the height to where the shortest bird can actually get to it. Um, if you have those that actually go on the ground, that's great. Um, the only thing with those is, is that you have to manage them a little bit more because the birds sometimes tend to knock them over or they'll get into them and kind of play um, in them. So you have to keep um, a watch on those. <coughs> Excuse me. We want to make sure that we have a drinker within 15 feet of the feeders. Um, we want to make sure that they're in the shade, um, especially during the, the warm weather. Um, usually the daily water consumption, especially if it's around 85 to 90 degrees for chickens, is around a half a pint a day. And that can vary, especially on the breed of bird. Um, you know, if ventilation is in the is in the system, if they're just outside roaming around, they may not drink as much as if they were in a coop um, with it hot being with it being during the summer. A general rule in poultry is to provide twice as much water as feed, um, because water actually helps to cool the birds, especially since they can't sweat and they start panting. Um, chickens do not. lose their their body heat. It occurs in the air sacs and lungs through rapid evaporation. All right, so let's look at our feeders. So we have um, different feeding systems. So we have a hanging system, um, which we want to make sure that it's at the, the height of our lowest bird. Um, they have an, an outer lip of pan level. Um, we want to prevent any kind of spillage and waste. Um, I know a lot of feeders you can put down on the ground and sometimes the birds will knock them over. Um, so we want to make sure that we eliminate that waste. Um, we also have a, tra a trough feeder system, um, which more birds can eat out of it at once. As one of the pictures shows, they actually took an old gutter and made it into a trough system. Um, we want to 
make sure too that we allow roosts. Um, so whenever we look at roosts, we want to make sure that we have 10 inches of space per bird. Um, so we want to do at least 12 to 14 inches apart. Um, a good thing that you can use is two by two lumber. It works well for roost. Um, and every now and then you may have to teach your, teach your birds how to use them. I think the majority of them, it just kind of comes as an instinct or from what, what I'm saying, it just comes as, a, as an instinct. So we want to look at also keeping our flock healthy. So our greatest expense at raising chickens is going to be the cost of feed. You can get medicated feed, um, which will treat like coccidious, which we're going to talk about those in just a minute, which is um, different vaccines and stuff that you can get. Um, but let's talk about our starter rations. So with our starter rations, those are given from day one to six weeks of age. Um, expect to feed at least four pounds of starter feed per bird during this six week period. Um, it can differ from flock to flock. At six weeks old of age, we want to switch to our grower ration and feed to our flock is about 18 weeks of age. Um, of course, you can get um, all kinds of different combinations from your local feed store or tractor supply. You can get a starter and grower ration that works well for, for, both, for both stages. Layer rations should be started at 18 weeks of age. Um, this feed should contain around 15 to 18% protein in the ration. Um, this is to prepare the birds for egg production. Um, it's critical that you do not feed layer rations to young birds or starter grower rations to egg producing birds. They need certain nutrients and that's the reason why there is different rations for different ages of birds. Um, birds with access to outdoors will supplement their diets with insects and green plants. Um, I know everybody probably has table scraps. I know I feed my dog table scraps a lot of times. Chickens will eat some table scraps. The thing with that is you need to treat table scraps as treats because if um, you give them only table scraps, yes, it's going to supplement your, your feed costs and make it go down, but they're probably not going to get a balanced nutrition like they would with a complete balanced ration. Um, so that's something that you may want to look at. It could uh, prohibit their performance, especially in egg production or um, in growth. So one of the, some of the routine treatments that we have is deworming. Um, it can it can it can be applied to um, an individual bird administered through water or feed. Um, some of the common diseases that birds should be vaccinated for is infectious bronchitis. Um, this is acute, it's highly contagious, it's an upper respiratory tract disease. Um, Barrett's disease is a highly contagious viral disease of poultry. Um, Coccidious is a rapid parasite that can spread um, within four to seven days causing lesions in the intestinal tract. And you can use medicated feed to um, prevent it. Foul pox is a viral infection. It's transmitted by mosquitoes. Um, antibiotics will not work against the virus. Um, the only treatment for it is a, a vac to vaccinate. Newcastle disease is an acute respiratory disease, but also affects the, the digestive and the nervous system. So one of the things to keep in mind too is that most hatcheries offer vaccination for birds, especially if you're purchasing them through mail order. Um, and this is something that we highly recommend that it, 
it's usually inexpensive and once I get vaccinated a lot of times you don't have to do anything else um there is instances I know one of my families has always ordered birds through our poultry chain project and never gotten them vaccinated they never had problems um with the the chickens getting sick or anything like that they have had problems with dogs um but i think that's just you know part of it um then you have some individuals that get all of their birds vaccinated and they deworm them every six months and um so it just depends on a lot of that is biosecurity making sure that those that are coming to your pens have not been around any other birds they have not been um in any kind of commercial houses um so we want to limit the spread of those diseases or any other kind of pathogens or um anything of that nature from coming from one house to another so a lot of that is sanitizing um if you have good sanitizing practices uh, especially only wearing one set of shoes out to your house out to your to your coop not letting other visitors go out there um it is a good rule of thumb so we we want to use some common sense we don't want to over medicate we want to follow the label instructions we want to follow the withdrawal requirements we want to be sure the products are approved for poultry so it should say chickens and or turkeys remember that if a little is good it does not mean that a lot is better um another thing that we suggest and it is examining your birds daily head to toe look for any kind of trauma um whether they're is discoloration on their wattles or combs or vents or um if their feather quality isn't as good as it was um any kind of fleshing um if you're starting to see any kind of cannibalism or anything like that so this is my resource page like i said um i'm going to email this to dr stevenson um, that way he can put this up on the Google Drive. These are all hyperlinks to some of our publications that we offer. If you want something that's a little more in depth um, or just looking for general information. Um, so here's my contact information. Um, feel free to give me a call. Feel free to shoot me an email if you have any kind of questions um i'm not gonna say that i'm an expert i got a little bit of knowledge but i'm sure i can find whatever you're looking for if i match them all.